All right, hello, welcome back, everybody. We are here, Adobe Live, last stream of the day. Yeah. Amber Torrealba, welcome. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. last one. Yeah, thanks for being with us. You yeah. know, it's uh, you know, we're happy we're here. We're sad that it's it's the last one of the day, but. It's been great. And if you guys have been with us all week, like we've been learning great things about Premiere Rush, learning learning about editing, learning about skimboarding, mm -hmm. learning about life. Yep. Learned, you know, it's great. We're getting getting so many pro tips for creating content. You know, just just learning to let go of things. <laughs> or, <Gotta> let go. <laughs> you know, all this great stuff. If you missed any of the streams, you'll be able to check them in the replay. Yep. You know, it's it's all going to be archived. It's going to be on here forever. If you're in the chat, if you're on behance.com slash live, then get at us. Let us know who you are, where you're from. Voodoo Vow's back in the room. Alexander Hetherington's back. Uh, we got uh, Will Olympio. Uh, let us know where you're from. What do you do? What are you doing with Rush? If you have any questions for our local expert here, just let us know. Uh, you'll probably recognize her when you open up Premiere Rush. That's what you're looking at. So it's uh, it's good times. Daniel Clark's in the room. Um, and also today, we the challenge continues. We challenge you to download Rush, make something with it. Today we're talking about movement, uh, movement in Rush. And, uh, you know, submit those to us. We'll review them at the end of the program. And uh, someone's going to win a year of Creative Cloud. We'll decide oh, yeah. that after we're off the air, but it's a good prize. I like it. Great. And uh, without further ado, what are you doing today? Yeah, we're uh, we're getting closer to like a, a final draft here, and uh, I want to add some sound effects, show some little underwater techniques I like to play with, just to kind of like add a little more depth to the to the edit and the sounds. Um, maybe add a drone outro, mm -hmm. try and see what we can do with like adding a logo at the end, you know, some text and things like that. Uh, we'll play with color correction. Yep. That's what we're waiting for as well. And uh, we'll show some other features that uh, I didn't get to show before in the program itself, maybe like the loop play back and stuff like that and how that kind of helps me uh, figure out my loop for Instagram. Perfect, great, because mm -hmm. we've got we've got a pretty solid line edit going. Everything's, you've got so many transitions, so much flow going on. These are gonna be like the final touches before we, before we go live. Yeah. So it's the, the very holistic, you've seen some content get made live right mm -hmm. here. This is, you know, this is how it gets done. It's a lot of work, yep. it's a lot of, a lot of choosing what's in there, choosing what's not in there, making hard choices. So exactly. it's been great. So yeah, let's dive in and see where we go. Yeah, you guys saw some of the process uh, yesterday and the day before where I kind of like, had to stop and think a little bit because you know you, you you get to those moments you're like all right I got this got this you get like on a train of thought and then all of a sudden it's like all right that didn't look the way I thought it was gonna look so you got to kind of backtrack and we've been kind of playing around with that the last couple of days trying to find transitions and trying to make it more of a complete storyline so we can kind of put it out there for YouTube or Instagram so um, I have the project pulled up here and I added a couple more clips um, if you guys didn't get a chance to see how we do that as well. Um, over here in the left tab, we have all of our project assets, and it's great because I have them all listed here where I can kind of scroll through them, see what I'm working with, and if I kind of get closer to a final product and I need to add a couple more things to try and see how I like the ending or how I want to finish it off, um, just run back into here to the assets panel, and then we just add some more things. So I happen to add um, two more clips here. I originally, part of, also part of the creative process, I originally had this clip in the beginning on the first day, um, and I thought that I didn't need it. So um, I deleted it, and um, I put it back in here, because I think that I might be able to find a little flow in the, in the ending, mm. and uh, kind of see where that's at. Um, this was the drone clip here that I added on to the end, and all this stuff um, we're going to watch kind of where we left off yesterday. But I wanted to add this on to the end just so I can kind of have an idea of what I want to kind of finish off with and before I watch the flow, so I can kind of just get a better feel for it as well. If you, if you don't know where you're going, how can you get there? Yeah, right? and sometimes you got to watch your video like over and over and over again the, in, in its incorrect form to just kind of see like, all right, what's wrong with this? And mm -hmm. it's not like a, you know, like a photo where you can sit there and stare at it, you know, because there's so <laughs> many different moments. So I catch myself watching my video like over and over and over. And I'm like, sometimes by like the 15th time, I'm like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> or you remember like a clip that you had in the right. bin. Like, oh, well, well, that'll help. <laughs> yeah, sometimes something just clicks, you know, it, and it, you know, a lot of people, I think, uh, stress themselves to be like, oh, it's yeah. got to be perfect the first time. 100%. But it's, you know, we've seen it live here. You know, it's a lot of, 
going over it, seeing what works. Yeah, bringing it in, taking it back out, putting it back in again. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys have seen this this process, and yeah, don't feel like you you know you got to have that first draft is going to be perfect because sometimes um like i think we mentioned the first day my first draft has a song that i don't even end up using in the final <laughs> draft <laughs> right. and so we're like okay here we go we send it off to the client or you show your friends and you're just like that's cool but like something's off <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the vibe <laughs> like the music's just not you're not feeling it so yeah. um we're gonna try and see how how the whole vibe feels and we'll play that back so excellent mm -hmm. and uh let's go back to the beginning of the clips here and let's see what we got going on we'll go ahead and close this panel great thing is you can kind of move around your workspace and see how you want to get a feel for that you can leave that open if you wanted to but i like to have more timeline and if you're if you're working on a laptop, it's not a huge screen, right. so these panels, squish and everything is great. You... Yeah, and uh, if you guys get a chance to use the Rush on mobile, they actually do a really good job of like kind of organizing everything and keeping things out of it, out of your way, so you can really maximize the the size of your screen and mm -hmm. really use like I have an iPhone <laughs> 8 Plus, but some people probably have an iPhone 6 or mm -hmm. an iPhone 5 or something smaller, and um, it really helps to have that clean interface to be able to edit that stuff. I'm, I'm still rocking a five. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I don't blame you. It's a smaller phone. It's easier to fit in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, I can put it in real pockets. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like back in the old days when we only had flip phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there was a lengthy flip phone discussion in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good times. <laughs> All right, let's see where we're at with the edit. Yeah, this is the beginning here. Play some music. We created some transitions there. Starting to get the flow. And I want to show you something that I also changed up. Right there. So yesterday, I um, we had this pitch, uh, we had this clip here of my dog, and it came after that. So we have this whole flow of like, ah, oh, jump out of the van, and we're into, we're surfing and stuff like that, riding the wave, going underwater, and then kind of tripped them up by putting the dog in there. And sometimes that's cool, and then sometimes you feel like. I think this transition is just gonna have to be used somewhere else. Um, mm. And we've had it here actually the whole time up until today. And um, I finally started staring at this and I was like, you know what? I think that I think that this clip is just gonna have to be set aside for a little bit. And um, the cool thing is, is you can always go back on what you've done with Command Z on a, on a Mac, uh, probably, you know, Control Z on a Windows, but you can, reverse and fix what you've done with a click of a button. And that's really nice to know because you don't want to have to try and remember where that was and all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And it's all, it's all non-destructive stuff. You mm -hmm. know, the files are still there. Everything's still there. There's concern this morning, people asking, when I delete something on my timeline, does it go away forever? <laughs> yeah. No, it's all still there. That's fine. Yeah, at least at least we're not making cuts into film and then having <laughs> to put it back together. This is at least a, a nice little program. You can do whatever you want. If you make a cut the wrong way, just Command-Z, go back. <laughs> so I, I decided to, and when I, when I moved that dog uh, frame over, as you see, the next frame was actually this transition which uh, is me going underwater. And um, just for this particular edit, I'm gonna try that out and see if I like that better. Boom. And so now I'm kind of still in that beach vibe and then we come back up and we're, we're, we're back at that pickle wall. <laughs> and so um, we, have, we have a lot of different options where I could even put the dog back after the pickle wall and I can see how that feels as well. And so that's a cool way to play with it as well because now look, look what happens with the hands. So now we're like, oh, okay, so I'm not going from a pickleball paddle to an arm. Mm -hmm. I'm going from a pickleball paddle to, um, you know, covering the screen. That makes a little more sense. And now I'm going from, you know, like the arm of the dog to an arm of a, of a sup. So keeping that in mind with, you know, finalizing your stuff, keeping your flow, try your different options, play it back, you know, go back and forth again and move things around and you can really start to get to that like finished product. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's iterative, mm -hmm. one thing at a time. One thing at a time and uh, yesterday we showed you guys also this transition that I added in here in the middle and you know, if you're feeling it again and you're like, wow, that transition actually like really flowed, I'd like to kind of float into the next one. 
Um, we'll go over here to our panel on the right and pull that out. And I used that dip to white um, last time because it just made a little more sense coming from, you know, this is called like whitewash in, in the ocean and it's just kind of like got that white filter to it. So here's that dip to white that you guys see on the project panel and it goes right to kind of like a sun flare that came from the paddle. Mm. And we're gonna go ahead and we added that in to here and that's where you see it kind of doing the same thing because sometimes, you know, we don't always use the best cameras uh, to get our footage and it's not always about the quality of the footage, sometimes it's about just the story you're telling. So for this instance, the, you know, the exposure didn't really work out properly when the GoPro came from being so dark and then you're lifting it so fast that, you know, if it was on, it's probably on auto or something and the GoPro just exposed for the light too fast. And it's like, oh, well there's that flash of white and that looks weird. It's almost like I put the transition without putting it there. Yeah. And adding in that transition kind of smooths it out a little bit better. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more intentional, get yeah. a bit more control over it, you know. <laughs> you, you, you point your camera at the sun, you're gonna get a bunch of iris elements going on. Exactly. I think we were talking about like happy accidents before. Yeah. And now uh, this was a, an accident that I wanted to make happy because it wasn't a happy accident. <laughs> so uh, we go ahead and just use a transition and that's a nice way to, to fill in that space. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see where we're, we're at now. So we have the dog. And then here's the arm. So that one's kind of like, all right, well, that's cool, but I don't know how well it fits, um, but, it, but it works for now. So you can kind of like just take a mental note, you know, you're watching your whole video through, trying to get closer to that finalized piece and just notate what you're watching so you can kind of keep, just keep going and see if you can feel the flow. And do we have like a target time? Like we want to be like inside a minute for this one? This one I tried to be inside of a minute so that way it could be used for Instagram as well. And sometimes, you know, I'll come up with a video and it's like three minutes long for YouTube and then it's a short, you know, 30 second teaser for Instagram. And that's always fun too because you can take your project that's really long and kind of duplicate it and onto another project and you can cut that down and, you know, narrow it to a little teaser and add some titles and all that good stuff to move them over to, you know, your YouTube full length video. Mm. And that's pretty fun too. And it's cool to kind of have work that can be used in two different areas if we just uh, crop it to Instagram, which I'll be able to show you guys later as well. So that's what we, we kind of have with this piece. It's more of like a quick montage, fun day in the life, like more of like we're talking about movement. Um, so that's more of what this piece is. And it's cool because it can be kind of used in two different areas, I believe. Twitter allows you to use even a long, a longer video nowadays as well, and different platforms that you guys may use to share your social media. Um, it's cool to be able to have that diversity with some of the smaller, uh, quick edits to share them everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's it's quite a challenge to tell a story in 15 seconds, 30 seconds, have a complete narrative. It's right. quite a quite a challenge if you want to really really get into like the discipline of editing. You gotta exactly. throw so much stuff out. <laughs> right, and it, even with this, you know, if, let's say when you're seeing this piece and it's like, oh wow, this is complete action, straight montage, just music to clips. Well, you know, we could even, that before when this, the first day we had a longer intro, and I could fill that space with a voiceover. Mm -hmm. I could be like, hey, my, my name's Amber Toriaba, I'm a professional skimboarder, blah, blah, blah. And you could add in those voiceovers in there and then it goes into the beat drop and now we're going into it. So you can create a, create it more of, of a piece that, you know, fits a, a narrative if you need to. And y with Rush, there's even ways to go into your, your sound settings and you can auto duck. Um, I believe Jeremy even showed that and probably Amy as well, that you can go in there and you can take a clip you can expand your audio and you can really go in there and just change the whole vibe of your video. Hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be straight music and stuff like that. So um, we, we might not get that far as uh, changing <laughs> the vibe of this particular video, but just know that um, with, you know, your tools and being creative, you can take something and really change the mood of it uh, the way you want. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's only bounded by your imagination out here. Exactly. 
And I've had to do that for a couple of videos as well, where, you know, I have a ton of action clips, but, you know, it's for, you know, an article piece where, you know, it's going to be in, you know, releasing as more of like storytelling. What's your, what's your story? What's your background? But we still have to show the action because that's the nature of my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to have those dip downs in the music and, you know, have those voiceovers or interview styles even where it cuts to, you know, your face. And you guys see probably a lot of that with any style, entertainment or sports. So... Yeah, you can even do that with Rush. <laughs> and so let's uh, let's go back to where we're at here and let's see, let's finish the flow and see mm -hmm. where we're at. You kind of hop there to skateboarding. You kind of turn on the skateboard and we end up skimboarding. We have our hand that we did that transition. Little high five. And then that beat drop was kind of right when the wave hit. I kind of mm. like that. Um, we could always play around with that because the beat drop could possibly happen um, when you when we dip under. But um, I'd like to show you guys now that we kind of are at this point where I can take advantage of this opportunity. Um, this style that I like to do kind of like makes them feel like they're more into the video in a sense. So we hear our music. That's just normal audio, right? Throughout. And we talked about um, keeping that raw audio as well. And you guys can see that right here, having that underwater sound along with the music. I like that because it, it feels a lot more natural. Um, we're going underwater and you want to kind of have that feel as well. But what you could do um, also is you could actually lower that clip volume. And when you go underwater, you can kind of make it sound a little more muffled. Mm -hmm. um, and by adding effects and things like that, you could really change the vibe. And I'll show you guys an example of that as well right here. So let's see. We dip underwater. Let's scrub right to where we go underwater. So we kind of hit right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do it this way. There's you might want to you know you might have different ways or styles of doing it, but I'm gonna go ahead and clip this clip right here. And now I have two separate audio mm -hmm. options on the bottom. We can go ahead and zoom in. And what I'm gonna do with this particular audio, I'm gonna come over here to the side panel. Oops, have our transitions. <laughs> And I'm going to remember where that cut is, cut the music right there as well. And I'm going to show you this an example right now, but we'll end up uh, doing it in the end. I'm not sure if I'll get to the very, very end of this piece of this video. So I wanted to make sure that I cover it. But um, this is something that I do with a lot of my videos when I go underwater or like something's covering the camera and I want them to feel that, um, that vibe. So I'm gonna lower the music actually here. And so I have the music clicked on the bottom and I'm gonna lower it a little bit. And you kinda gotta try it and see what it sounds like you first. Can, you can also see on the, uh, mm -hmm. on the interface there that the, the bars are going down, right? It's getting... Yep getting those thin, <laughs> tell there's less audio because mm -hmm. there's less highlighted stuff. It, it really helps too, like being able to see that because you, you never know when you're gonna have to go back on it and be like, okay, where did, where did that audio dip down? <laughs> I'm like, cause you know, I've had plenty of times too where I've kind of been done with, with the video and clipped that audio right there and created a, a dip down and I ended up having to completely move around clips and then now that dip where that particular part of the song is, mm. is doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. So now I'm just like walking and then as the music goes away, I'm like, uh, <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't fit. So. Very unnerving. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about, you know, being able to, you know, go back and, you know, try and also time what you do, like, so that way you don't double your work. Like we wouldn't want to col start color correcting in the beginning. So. This is another thing where, um, for example, I'd love to show you guys now, but you can always wait till the end to kind of do these things. Make mm -hmm. sure you have everything where you need it. Um, you can make that note and like, okay, I'm gonna go back and do that at the end. Add your sound effects and do it then. So let's see what this sounds like when I lower the volume and going from normal audio to kind of dipping underwater. And now you guys kind of see where we're like, oh, we went underwater and we all know when we go underwater, everything's muffled and right. everything's like quiet. So it's kind of cool where you can 
click even the raw clip, you can raise that volume a little bit so it's even more like, oh, in your face, like we're underwater. And we can even lower this a little bit more. Another thing I like to do, which we talked about a little bit briefly, is kind of anticipating um, that cut before it happens. And so we can kind of go back on the audio here. And I don't know if you guys can see that music, I'm pulling it back and I'm actually adding more of that time where it's quieter to try, to try and get it right on point. Mm. So we can do that. And there we go. Mm. And that's a technique that I love to do because people aren't expecting it. Cause they're just like, you know, you're, you're vibing to the music and all of a sudden it's like, and then now you're like feeling, and then you're, you're back up and you're on the land again. <laughs> it's another, yeah, it's another point of contrast that pulls the attention. Exactly. So you can, you can do this with anything, you know, if you're, uh, let's say you're just shooting something like super cinematic and it has nothing to do with water or anything like that, you know, you can even do it when you're going between a scene that goes from like, let's say super daylight and then all of a sudden you're in a dark room or something, or you have that transition and you can not necessarily muffle it, but you can change the sound or the feel of the clip just to kind of add that diversity in your video and like take, like it almost wakes them up a little bit because mm -hmm. let's say they're getting bored by like, what are we at, like 40 seconds? People are like, okay, Amber, this video is way too long <laughs> for these many this many transitions. Um, and then all of a sudden like, whoa, that was kind of cool. And then like, you never know with Instagram or whatever, um, you know, platform you put it to, they might, might make them watch it again. Or mm -hmm. with YouTube, for instance, and you're working on those stats and c trying to retain that attention, um, you know, you can keep them, you know, here and there with different things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, some people would, would think, oh, I need to add more sound, right? But it's taking yeah. away the sound that brings your attention as well. Exactly. And that raw audio is really cool sometimes because it really makes you feel like you're there, you know? Like that's exactly what I experienced when that wave came up. Like honestly, <laughs> if, if you see my head movement here, I come from not knowing that that wave is there. <laughs> and then I turn around and I'm like, oh my goodness, okay. And then it, it, it crashes and hits me and now we're under and it's, you can see, it's cool, like actually this is pretty cool quality to see really just what's going on and just now you can get the feel. <laughs> and then we're back up. Awesome. <laughs> so that's a, a cool technique and a, a lot of people actually have asked me or, or notated that like on my comments or whatever on Instagram and I love it because it's just, you know, I love the way that it feels because it feels more natural to like, this is what actually happens, and it's cool that people notice that too. So, <laughs> great. Yeah, and, and anybody, I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat jumping in here. We got uh, Will Olympio, we got uh, Dario Coronel. So it's great, great seeing people getting active. If you have questions for us, lay it on us. We'll uh, we'd love to tell you more about Rush, anything that interests you guys. But uh, but yeah, where do we go next from here? We've got we're we're moving the sound around, yep. what other layers of polish do we need to drop on this thing? We gotta add some logo, we gotta do some titling. Um, so we'll go back and just make sure that that's um, kind of chill for now and um, leave it the way it was until we get the finalized piece. But you saw how fast that I did that and I can just finish it up and just, doop, there's a spot, fix it up and done. So we wanna um, try and do an outro for like YouTube mm. and I like to do like um, leaving the logo there or you can even, a lot of people like to show their social media platforms or what, stay tuned for my next video, subscribe here. Mm -hmm. You can do all that stuff um, with Rush as well. Awesome. So, and uh, Alex Estrada was just asking, can we see the whole flow again just before we uh, Yeah, let's do it. On? And once, once we're done with this, this is gonna get published uh, I think yeah. on your YouTube page, right? Yeah, I'm gonna publish it both on my YouTube and my Instagram. Okay. So you guys can get to see um, both versions of it. Um, I'll tweak it up and make sure it's like nice and cool. <laughs> and uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to like, you know, hit me up on either platform and just say, hey, what's up, was, was tuned into the live or, or whatever. And um, I'd love to hear the feedback, so mm -hmm. it'd be fun. Yeah, always always get involved on the comments section. You know, that's, that's the social part of media. Yeah, you know, <laughs> there the, you go. The, the creators are right there. You know, ask questions about things. I know. You know it's, uh, it's a great resource, you know. It's, uh, if, if you're interested in this kind of thing, well, the person making it's really interested in it too. Because they're making it. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah, I feel like a lot of us almost forget like the social part of the social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not a one-way uh, one interaction. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, let's get, a, let's get a feel for the flow and just see where we're at. And uh, we can make any tweaks later and go from there.
I think I fixed my hair as I was skating there. I don't know if you saw that shadow, but wow. What a time to make sure that we're looking okay. Yeah. <laughs> you never know who's in the park. Hey, just know that if you aspire to, to skate and look good, you can do it. I love that you had the, the hair flip and then the hair was in the lens. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy you saw that. Okay, I as, as soon as that passed, I wanted to show you guys that. So I was playing around with that and um, this is another way that you can be like, oh, I don't have a transition, but I do. <laughs> because my hair. So the number one thing is like, do I wear my hair up or do I wear my hair down when the GoPro is like filming? Because half the time it's really annoying. I have gotten like a really sick wave and my hair literally covered the whole camera. <laughs> and I come up and I was like, yeah, you're like sick. And you're looking at, let's, let's watch it with your friends. And we're like, cool. This is like completely <laughs> just brown over the, <laughs> it, it was bad. So I have like to make sure that my hair is kind of like behind my ears when I go. But the thing is, is like, it really has helped me with transitions. So even when you feel like you're like, oh man, I sh this, this sucks, but use whatever you can to make what you make out of it because my hair made this transition. So let's watch it. I have that problem all the time. Yeah, my hair is always in. The yeah, you you got you got to <laughs> tame that thing. <laughs> a high proponent of wigs over here. I don't know. I think I think there's some barbershops around here. Yeah. <laughs> a sick fade this afternoon. <laughs> Looking good. Keep it clean. <laughs> And uh, folks are asking in the chat, we've got uh, uh, some sticker giveaway coming up. You see the little deadline down the, oh, yeah, down the corner. Close. Get active in the get active in the chat and uh, our fantastic algorith algorithms will find you. So let's let's go deep into how this this piece comes together here. Yeah, like, with definitely. With this continuity between clips. <laughs> Let, let's see this hair flip. So we came out from the underwater of this right here. So I kind of hit the water slapped and let that water slap. So now you guys are even seeing, I can make this even smoother. So you can kind of see these frames where I'm still underwater. I, I really bent down for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real behind the scenes, guys. Yeah. Um, Stand limber. <laughs> gotta trim it down a little bit more so it's kind of like, right there is good. So now we have more seamless from here to there. And now when I flip my hair up, you notice the I cut it right where the water is right in front of the screen. So we kind of have this line of water. And even though it's not truly a line, it's just something, an object that's like really drawing attention and it's kind of flowing this way. So the next frame is actually my hair flowing the same way. Mm. And even though it's like brown to clear, it's the motion and like the trick of the eye that like, okay, this is what's happening, and I don't even think, I didn't even see that happen. Hold on, <laughs> let's back up, okay. We'll go a little farther. Here we go. Boom. So it was almost like the water was flowing into the camera and coming down, and my hair was doing the same thing. So you can find those moments where, you know, just you can make lines or almost any sort of transition out of whatever you can work with and the hair getting in the camera came through. Those happy accidents. Yep, leading right into it. Boom, and now we're skimming again. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so stoked that you saw that. <laughs> I'm a very attentive person. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm watching things. <laughs> my head on a swivel out here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love, and I love uh, how he said he liked the board flip effect because that's, a, that's kind of a signature thing that um, I, just from coming from filming yourself so much and just like, Okay, it's just me and the camera. What do I do to just try and add an element? And so I would just kind of get bored coming out of the water skimboarding and I just have my hand on my board and just flip it around. And one time I just like 
kept the camera recording on accident and I was messing with my board and I rewatched the, the footage and I was like, wow, that, that actually looked dope. Like it was just flipping in the air for a really long time and it was like getting sun flares and coming down. And so um, I had to do a video where I was transitioning from skate to skim and I was like, well, why, why wouldn't I just throw my skateboard up? And so now it's kind of like a signature thing where I love to just it's kind of throw, throw one board up and like catch the other. And it's like my transition into the next sport. <laughs> so. That's great. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. Um, and now we that we have, you know, we kind of seen the whole flow. Mm -hmm. we, we have this last clip here where I'm falling into the water. And before uh, we get to it. We've, oh, yeah. we've reached our zero hour on our, our chat and win. So, we blast the air horn noise, <laughs> and uh, it is, uh, it's is—it's time for our algorithms to find someone in the chat. So, if you're with us on Behance Live, and you're, uh, you know, you can share with us, you know, let us know who you are, where you're from, uh, get active in there, say hello in the chat, and uh, our algorithm will pick you out. So, we got 100 custom stickers coming to you from Sticker Mule. Who's it gonna be? Get active. I love that. I love that animation. <laughs> yeah. I love those things. I love fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody, we're seeing lots of folks out here. Jan's back. Francisco, you know, Ahmed is here. And we got uh, Chicago. Yeah. Agnes. Yeah, Chicago. Argentina. Where yeah. are you guys from? Have you been to uh, Argentina? No, it's like, yeah, here it's cold, go. But <laughs> look, <laughs> look at me the first thing I say. Oh, this beautiful place, but it's cold. It's not so cold. <laughs> okay, Everything but, is cold, <laughs> yeah. The ocean is cold. The winter is cold. So that's why I'm going to go to Australia now, time, you know, <laughs> next month. <laughs> but Oh, yeah, is that uh, Gold Coast? Yeah, that would be fun. I haven't been, but I hear it's just amazing. Yeah, it's uh, terrific. A lot, of, a lot of people there. It's a very popular spot. So. Yeah. But there are there are more secluded spots. So. <laughs> so. Got to find the local spots. Oh, Malibu! Look at that. Hey. Florida. I think I saw Florida in there. Mm -hmm. Georgia. <laughs> all from the East Coast. Oh my Tampa. goodness. Tampa. All the Florida folks. I love it. <laughs> you oh. guys have probably been to Melbourne and been like, uh, "What do we do here? This is boring." <laughs> <laughs> like Amber's from Melbourne. <laughs> oh man. But we've got a winner. It's Kenny Stokes. So Kenny, congratulations. Yeah, Kenny. And uh, you know, our, uh, we'll be in touch with how you how you get those stickers. And uh, check out Sticker Mule if you've got branding. If you have a social media channel, it's a great thing to you know give to your subscribers to stick all over things. You know, gotta brand your merch. It's important. <laughs> And uh, you know, it's just nice to be able to like just start claiming things as yours. You just start yeah. putting your sticker on. Hey, things. I've already done it today. They can't really see it, but yeah. they gave me a sticker <laughs> oh, this you, week, and you it's already the A. All right, everybody's <laughs> getting it. It's really just for Amber. That's true. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> yeah, A is for Amber, not Adobe. <laughs> Get real. Yeah, All thanks right. Adobe. Yeah. So everybody, <laughs> thanks for being in the chat. And since you're in there, I should tell you we also have a challenge going on today. Yeah. The challenge continues. We want you to download Rush. We want you to make something in Rush. We want you to send it to us at the MoBox link in the challenge details on Behance.com slash live. If you're watching us on the, the restream on YouTube, then uh, head on over to Behance Live so you can get involved on in the chat, get into the challenge, and someone will be winning a year of Creative Cloud. Yep. That's, uh, that's some big time stuff. So Rush is in the Creative Cloud. Photoshop's in the cloud, Illustrator's in the cloud, and everything's yep. in the cloud. There's so many apps to get into. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing where you, you come for one app and then you're like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? <laughs> Suddenly I'm into podcasting. It's like an all you can eat buffet. Yeah, yeah. And you just, you just <laughs> stuff your computer full of it. Well, recently, uh, Adobe Fonts uh, just uh, happens. You now have like unlimited fonts that you can cram into your mm -hmm. computer. You know, and uh, I just feel like uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go wild with that. <laughs> Usually, the limit kept me disciplined. Yep. Now I'm now I'm gonna go crazy. I can I can attest to that. Like <laughs> I, I love playing around with different fonts. You can never you never have too many. No, so. seriously. And I also noticed that Alexandra saw my Max sweatshirt. And so I'm not sure if you went to Max, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> if, if there are any Max people in here, let us know. And, yeah. Uh, say what's know, up. If you if you get out to that often, it's, it's a terrific conference. Oh, it's so sick. Yeah. It was I'm, really fun. I'm always 
working when it's happening. But oh. What are you gonna do? That's, that's <laughs> life. Uh, that but is yeah. life. So yeah, let's uh, let's jump back in here and uh, yeah, let's try and let's try and find uh, a way to kind of finish this video off with uh, with like a YouTube type outro or or something like that and see where we're at. So if uh, if I were to finish the the video on Instagram, I probably would be ending it on this clip. But let's explore um, a longer side of it. So. I fell underwater here and that allows me for kind of like my last transition or it allows me to loop back to the beginning because if you guys remember the beginning I kind of come from my knee and I'm kind of putting my wetsuit on. Mm -hmm. So we can remember that, hey, this can be an ending, but uh, for this particular instance, we're going to make it go on just a little bit farther because I have an idea for how we can really end it. So let's look at this clip here and we have I'm swimming, swimming, and then I'm coming up out of the water and I'm going back down. So we have that other transition that we were kind of looking for and I'm going to take advantage of that. So let's cut it right here. Delete that. And now we have me going underwater and kind of being silly. <laughs> Saying what's up, you guys, I'm cold underwater. <laughs> So, we're going to Command-K that right there. Oop. Go right there. Command-K. And we're going to delete the rest. So, now we have that last kind of clip where I'm like, alright, peace out. <laughs> Clip's over, and this is going to be my outro. So, I have this drone clip here where I can add lots of titles, lots of fun stuff, because it's kind of just a lot of basic. And you saw the music kind of ended right there. And we're kind of down into that low. And you can see the drone didn't really start moving until then, so we'll kind of cut that. Like right around there. And it, it's kind of cool because it shows like, here I am underwater, and even though, heart, sorry to break it to you, I wasn't swimming under this drone, <laughs> but <laughs> we're gonna pretend that I was. Right. Um, and you kind of have that option to start it. See how we cross over those rocks? Mm -hmm. Maybe if I start it like here, we have a little bit of my, like my body is darker with, you know, this bluish water. Mm -hmm. So it might feel a little less jumpy if I start at the rocks, but let's try it without first. You see, that's option number one. And we're scrolling, we can put some text there. And let's try if we start right here. Kind of like find a nice happy medium. And sometimes you just, it is better off the first one, let's see. And there you go. Um, actually, I'm kind of stumped. Um, I don't know if any of you in the chat maybe you want to tell me which option you like better. Yeah, let us know. You be the creative directors today. Yeah, do you like water or rock? <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say. So if you like water, put water or a little water emoji. And if you like rock, sorry, there's no rock emoji. It's probably some mountains. You got some mountain emojis. Yeah, you can get those in there. Help me out. Water, water or rock. Well, I, well, I get some. Um, I'll get my logo together. I'll start mm. doing with the the titles. And you guys give me your opinion if you think like the water or the rock mm. is better because I'm kind of stumped. Yeah. And just before you get into that, I'd love to ask. Who's the, are you flying the drone on this one? That's that's Patty flying the drone. Oh, that's, Patty's up on the drone again. Yeah. And uh, where, what beach is this? This is Laguna Beach. Uh, I believe this was West Street Beach. It's one of our like kind of local, more local-ish beaches. I would say it's not, it's not as popular as probably like uh, Aliso Beach, which actually has a parking lot. This is one of those beaches <laughs> where you get you gotta park on the side of the road and you like walk down mm -hmm. to the side. <laughs> Pro tip: if there's no parking lot. It's probably better. So. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's very true. If it's hard. <laughs> Hard to get to, there's probably less people, which is always nice. <laughs> yeah, you don't want you don't want people crowding the wave. You don't want to wait online. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's always great filming in Laguna Beach during the summer because everyone walks up to you and they see you filming. So you're like literally filming in front of like a ton of people because it's just <laughs> one of the best places to be in the summer. So it's like well, we got to film here and there's a ton of people around. Here we go. So that's another element that uh, a lot of vloggers face. I, I heard Jeremy talking about it earlier on the live and it's just like people 
you know, just being around and how to stay focused on your filming when right. you have the distractions. Because they come up to Patty all the time. He's shaking his head over there. Uh, obviously, you guys can't see him, but <laughs> he when he's filming the drone uh, and you flying a drone, bro. Yeah, any person that walks by, you don't even have like five seconds. They're like. What you, what you got? Like all up in your screen. Like, <laughs> what kind of drone is that? How much did you pay for it? Well, you, you got a license are, for that? Yeah. Can I? Can you show me the clips? And it's like, um, we're kind of working right now. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like if you just imagine somebody walking around. I, I, I should have been a cubicle for Halloween because I just w I walk around a walking cubicle. And then when somebody, as I'm filming, and somebody walks into my cubicle, I'll be like, hey. I'm gonna walk into your cubicle in the office. <laughs> yeah. You're in my office now. <laughs> but it, it's all part of it. But it's, it's cool because you, you do meet a lot of really cool people while you're filming, and you never know who is gonna walk up to you. Yeah. Because you might have some like super inspirational person be like, "Oh, hey, actually, I do that too, and this and that." And <laughs> so it's a gamble. Now I'll get my drone out, and we're both flying drones. <laughs> <laughs> I know that doesn't ever really happen often, but mm -hmm. hey, gotta be open to. That's right. Yeah. You know? Open to the possibilities. So I've seen I've seen a lot of rock. We're, we're into a water phase now on the chat, but cool. I saw a lot of people into rock. Oh, nice, it, yeah. Uh, it, it really oscillates, so. Cool, so rock's winning right now. <laughs> the rock, he always wins. It's the people's champ, he's come <laughs> he back. Wins, seriously. All right, the, let's, uh, let's Dwayne do the rock. the rock Johnson is the reason that I have independent eyebrow control. Hey, he's, so. he's a very talented person, I'm not gonna lie. Dwayne Johnson, yep. yeah. When I was a kid, I was like, I want to I be able to do that with eye eyebrows. So <laughs> practiced every day. Now That's like, amazing. Yeah. So. Uh, that should be, I can't really do it very well. <laughs> I feel practicing. like I'm, I'm struggling. I'm like pushing my eye down. <laughs> so yeah, thanks guys for like telling us your, your thoughts because that was kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. But it, it's cool because I, you know, I was thinking that that would be more of like the, the feel because just seeing like, you know, my body being there in the water, it, you know, it's like that dark image and kind of starting from a dark image, it feels mm -hmm. like it would be a little more seamless that way. And we could also cheat the frame a bit by, you know, resizing and moving the moving the footage around a little bit. If exactly. We, if we've got the pixels. Definitely. You know. Yeah, and with, with this type of um, clip we do as well, because um, filming in like 2.7K, you can kind of not lose that resolution. Um, we could zoom in here if we really wanted to and kind of, you know, get a better feel for where the image is. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like it yeah. the way it is. It looks nice. So, um, but just to show you guys that option, if you happen to miss it on the other uh, feeds, we have um, the titles here that I mentioned to you. The whole purpose of this clip would be to kind of create an outro. Mm -hmm. So let's see how much time we have on it. Got lots of time there for titles. Still going. And it's nice and calm. There's not a lot of things to visually distract from the titles. Exactly. Dang, nice clip on that one, Patty. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Shout out to Patty on the drone. Shout out to Patty on the drone on that one. That was, I was skimming, I think, so he was taking care of the visuals. Very, very stable on the gimbal. Yeah. Not a lot of jerky motion. That's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, pro tip for the drone, you know, like keep a path and stick with it, yep. you know? Stay Don't smooth. do that like, doop. Yeah, because <laughs> if you're gonna uh, for for your rush tip, as soon as you see the drone do this, command K. Yeah, <laughs> just like cut that little c out, and you know maybe maybe find another cut to the music or yeah. or something. Try yeah. and um, like improvise, because we have plenty of clips where um, we'll just be flying, and then all of a sudden there's a tree. <laughs> wow. And we're like, oh shoot, uh, let's go ahead and clip that right there. Oh. Right. And you, sometimes you really have to have like soft hands on the on the controls. Right. Like, they're very sensitive. Sometimes. Sometimes and oh, just, yeah. you, oh that's that's too much. Yeah, I can I definitely know from like I used to when I had my drone, I used to skate and fly it at, and but this was before you had the screen. So mm. <laughs> you don't see what you're actually filming. So I, I started to get good at filming obviously without seeing what I was doing and I would just like fly the drone up and I would you you see the clip of me just like my feet and then all of a sudden it lifts up and I'm like Pushing, trying to follow it and watch it because you don't have G, like you can't you can't see with the screen and you can't let it fly away from you like nowadays. Mm -hmm. You yeah, can let the got, drone fly so far from you. It's got GPS return now, mm -hmm. so don't sweat it. <laughs> yeah, if uh, any of you came from the old days of like old days, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I, the five years ago days? Yeah. You know, the five years ago days of uh, the first DJI drones, you know you know the pain. <laughs> yeah, the technology is just so crazy. We'll, we'll nerd out about drones later. I know, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> um, so you can actually add a, a Rush title um, that's already 
put in here. So I could kind of finish it off with, um, you know, adding in something basic like this, like adding in my name. You can click and you can drag right over on top of the timeline there. Mm. And you can see the timeline's kind of small right now, so I can adjust this. Kind of makes my, mm. my screen a little smaller there up top, but right. I'm more so working in my timeline now, and I tend to do this when I edit a lot. Once I get my visuals down and I'm done kind of piecing together, I, I focus more on the, like, you know, the tight spots of the timeline so I can see what I'm working with. And we can even zoom in here and see more. And there we go. Yeah, when you need that frame by frame micro adjustment, it's great to be able to resize your interface. Exactly. It's perfect. This uh, this title here is just this title for now, but you can see how it comes in, just kind of basic. And we can go ahead right here on the actual screen. I love this. It's just so much easier. <laughs> There's not a separate window to fill things out and then yeah. refresh it. <laughs> it's kind of like when you're when you're on a computer screen after touching an iPad for so long, you try and touch the computer <laughs> screen, and you're like, oh wait, this isn't touch screen. <laughs> Hold on. Right. Come on now. <laughs> so you guys can rest assured that you can just click right on your title and change that up. <laughs> it's, just, it's intuitive. It's the thing you want to, you want to be clicking on. Exactly. Uh, and also, you got to, we got about 15 minutes. Get your entries in if you're going to be, uh, if you want to win that Creative Cloud subscription. Get your entries in. Yeah, do it. Make it happen. We got, uh, we got three new ones. Oh, four new ones now. Oh, Ooh. sweet. Ooh. Stoked. My push made it happen. I'm excited Ooh. to see those. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fun. Um, yeah, you can even take this here, and you can kind of mess around with it on the screen, but if you do like to happen to have a separate work workspace over here, um, you can see I can change the font. We were talking about all these. <laughs> oh, look, stay rad. <laughs> Make sure you highlight it, so Command A. You can highlight, but that actually is great because it, it allows for diversity because I can highlight Tori Alba instead of Amber, and I can actually change that font and mm. yeah, so cool. if you were trying to go for you know you know more of a, a title and then something underneath it and you know adding more elements, you would probably want to change that up a bit. Mm. So for this one, we'll we'll highlight the whole thing, and we'll go ahead and mm. and uh, Jan is asking if his entry got in. It did. I'm looking at I'm looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. I see a kitty cat in it. Spoilers. <laughs> Heck yeah. Cats are like the best thing on the internet, right? <laughs> They're up there, you know. <laughs> Some people like otters. There's a big otter community. Oh, wow, yeah, otters Some, are, they're pretty cool. The cats of the sea. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, some people are, some people are more dog people than cat people, I suppose. It's tough. Otters to and cats, dogs and seals, because seals are the pups of the sea. There you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, seals. I was gonna say, like, if you're, you're in the water a lot, like, to get a lot of marine life around you sometimes. Yeah, but it's funny because just not as much in California as it actually. Hold on, let me let me let me track, backtrack. I did have a whale swim underneath me like three or four months ago. It was like this Ooh. summer. It was the most terrifying moment of my life, but also the most like majestic moment of my life because mm -hmm. I looked down and it's I'm only in like I swear I was only in like seven to ten foot of water, so I didn't even know how it could swim under me, but it was a baby whale. Mm. And I saw the bigger whale before I paddled out surfing, and um, I, I thought it was gone, because I thought there was only one, but it was the baby. <laughs> mm. And I look down, and I'm, my feet are hanging from my surfboard, and then all of a sudden I just see this giant, massive object just gliding so slowly underneath me, and I, I don't know why my first reaction was not to lift my feet. It was to grab myself and my hands. I was like, oh, I think what that's going to do. <laughs> I have to make myself me. small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't put your feet up, Amber. Put your hands up because they're already out of the water. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a moment that just consumes you. You know, you're like, holy crap. Um, yeah. that That's pretty scary. But we, we do see seals so much out there and mm. uh, they're really cute. <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, there are some here in San Francisco. Check out the harbor. There's yeah. a lot of... Uh, a lot of big ones. I think they've been eating a lot of tourist food. So, <laughs> um, yeah, those things are crazy. They're adorable, though. <laughs> yeah, like, the people cleaning the dock, and the, one of them just breached out onto the dock oh and then my, like pushed the guy. I did that one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, you some know, viral videos out there. Yeah, sure. they just want to have fun. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> 
Animals just want to have fun. <laughs> That's right. All right, so yeah, we're getting getting into font selection here. Yeah, and um, so I actually decided to go with not all caps because I kind of like this font, and I just want to show an example of how you can use this font. And then I'll show you an example of how we can just bring in a font that I actually already have. So like on my website and just different YouTube videos that I make, um, I kind of use the same font across the board mm -hmm. just to kind of help your branding, you know, use keep, keep up with the same stuff. And um, so we're going to test this one, and... We'll be able to see. You can even. <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's important to be consistent in your branding. Right. I can't. Uh, can't, can't stress, stress that, that enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they even talk about like orange juice companies just changing their packaging and then like all their sales going down. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you, make sure you you have intentionality behind your design choices. If you're gonna do a rebrand, do a little bit of research. Oh yeah, exactly. That's that's the way to go. Just a little. Do the do the minimum amount of research at least. Yeah. I had to say. <laughs> no doubt. You can you can get creative here too, um, and you can even add transitions onto your title. I don't know if you guys saw no. what I just did there, but I'll back it up. Um, so we were in the title over here, and uh, just highlight this, that. This one's pretty basic. Like there's not a lot of animation in mm -mm. it. I don't think. It's pretty simple because um, I kind of like to keep it pretty simple with with a lot of my edits. I just feel like it. Everything is so busy right now in just the world of media. So the simpler, most simple I can keep it, <laughs> however <laughs> you'd be best to say it, that's what I try to do. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll even make the title a little less strong there because you can, uh, or long because you can actually leave room to, you know, add in my Instagram title or like mm. follow me on Instagram, subscribe here. So a lot of you probably, if you have a YouTube channel, that's very, very important. Um, for subscriptions and things like that. Yeah, if you're familiar with most YouTube things, you've got that uh, that space at the end where you're gonna have like buttons to click on or, yep. or different call to action to move people onto something. Exactly. So. And you can leave yourself room for that by even moving this around. So this one actually has an overlay, which is kind of cool. Um, but if I didn't want to use uh, an overlaid title, I can just take that one away and I can go back to here go into my titles, and I can do a basic default one that doesn't really have that overlay. Mm -hmm. And now we can actually take this title and we can move it. So now you can see this is a better position if you were to put in other options here to for YouTube and things like that. Maybe you want to, you know, want, maybe I want to recognize Patty on the drone or this person on the cam and edited by me or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Um, for this instance, I'll show you how to upload your own logo. Um, if you have your branding already set in and you don't want to use a title, mm -hmm. um, I'll just open up my finder here. And um, I think a lot of people, when they see these kinds of software, like, oh, am I limited to the templates? Oh, am I am I stuck on these things? Like, no way, you can bring in, you know, bring in the things that you make custom for it. You know, it's it it is a full featured thing. Exactly. Um, I'm waiting for my hard drive to plug in there. Okay, there we go. Needs more cranks. <laughs> we'll uh, pull open the folder here that I had, and the great thing, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but um, I didn't even have my hard drive plugged in and I was working on this project. That's not something that I can normally do in another program. <laughs> um, the great thing about the Creative Cloud is it just remembered my project, remembered my assets that I had on that left-hand side, and I didn't even know that my hard drive wasn't plugged in just now, because we were <laughs> sitting here working on this edit, getting yep. it done, and I'm like, oh, let me pull that logo from my hard drive and it wasn't even plugged in. Yeah, well, it's, it's <laughs> constantly syncing, right? So yeah. you could, you could, you know, push your computer off the desk and pick up your phone or... Yeah, you know, it's amazing. I could have just went back on my phone and continued to edit this, you know? Yeah. It's Ooh, great. Gotta run out of the office. Yeah, do, do, do. exactly. That, and that, that happens so much nowadays with just anybody's job and especially, you know, not all of us are doing this full time. A lot of us are working to do this later on and we're having to work almost two jobs because we have our normal job and we have our passion and we're really hoping that our passion will kind of be our full-time job and like take over our lifestyle. But for now, you know, we gotta pay the bills and there's plenty of people out there that, you know, even have a family that you gotta attend to. And, you know, 
if the kids are hanging out at the playground and you're sitting there editing on the phone and you're like, heck yeah, <laughs> I'm able to get some work done. Or, you know, you never know. It's just, mm-hmm. it's really cool to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm totally looking after my kids. Let me go. <laughs> totally watch your kids, guys. Maybe maybe the dog park, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> don't, I, I don't have any kids. Do not take <laughs> advice from me. <laughs> the, we're, we're here to edit. We're not here yeah. to, to <laughs> tell you watch have, any kids. Yeah, tell you how to live your lives, you know. But, uh, yeah, just know that lots of options. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Working on the subway or whatever you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's that logo. So I have that there, and uh, I'm able to kind of play around with it now. And is this a, is that like a TIFF or a? This was just a, a PNG file. Okay. So it's like transparent. Um, so if you create it in Photoshop, you can make it, you know, your logo transparent and be able to put it right on top of a video. And it looks nice and nice and clean like that. Mm-hmm. Um, this one here is going to be transformed a little bit bigger because it's small. So I can go right into my transform tool and handle this title just like I would a normal video. Mm. So, or I can click on it like that. And you see there that we've adjusted the size. Mm -hmm. So now we're a lot less small and we don't want to have to have grandma like yeah. Really? <laughs> and if someone's going to watch this on their phone, oh, yeah. you know, it's got to be big enough they can read it. 100%. On the, in the real world of their phone. Exactly. So it's definitely worth, like, if you're going to work in social media, preview it on a device that you're going to be yeah. using. Yeah. Exactly. That's actually one thing I always do. Like, even when you're done with the project, like, export it to your phone, airdrop it to your phone or whatever, just watch it one time. Kind of take the video in as if you were the audience, and then you get a real feel for how your video is. And uh, you can do the the cross dissolves right on the title, just like we showed you on the other one. And um, boom, I added it on both sides because I kind of want that nice little fade in, fade out. Boom. And as you can tell, sometimes you get really lucky and it's on a beat. (laughs) So it happened to fade in and fade out on that beat. (laughs) Nice. This is is working out really well. (laughs) I swear this is live. <laughs> we did not practice this. No, that was an accident, and it was another happy accident. So that that looks really cool, and you know, so we can we can definitely have that. And you guys see there, add in whatever sort of subscription or anything that you need mm-hmm. to add in there, and you have. Boop. And also, you don't want the music to keep going, because then we have a black screen. So that's super important to make sure you cut your music before you export, because. <laughs> You can, I've done this before on accident, but you, you could totally have like a one minute video and then your music is like a five minute song, but you only mm. use this exp, like part of it and you definitely export it and you'll have just a black four minutes yeah. <laughs> on your video. Cause this in, in Rush, we don't have like a work area to set or, or a, um, like an in and out point. Right. So it's just gonna take the maximum duration yeah. of what you've got. Exactly. So. so yeah, if you came from other editing tools, much of the same, you know, just make sure you, you pay attention to where that music and that last bit of that timeline ends and cut that off. You can use Command K, chop that and delete. There it goes. Mm-hmm. Now it's gone. So, um, yeah, this is kind of like our YouTube style piece. So um, I could technically go ahead and stop it right right here, even right. on the underwater, because I believe, let's watch that ending really quick one more time. Mm. Or, render. just before we oh, yeah, yeah. we sort of jump into a, a, go to the Instagram version, if you were to export this for YouTube, what would be the process going next? Yeah, um, so we definitely wanna, we can take it here, and you, you see up on the top, we have edit and we have share, so we can go to share, and Rush gives us so many different ways to kind of just do everything right in program. And that'll save you guys time too, especially if you wanna upload to YouTube because YouTube's like really extensive as far as your tags and you know making sure everything, like your titles and all that stuff. And so you can sign in right here to YouTube and it takes you right into the application. You get everything good to go and you'd be able to um, get all your settings down um, it actually actually optimizes it specifically for the channel that you're uploading to. So a lot of us kind of with, like especially with um, Premiere Rush or even if you came from Final Cut or something like that, uh, I mean uh, Premiere Pro, 
it's very confusing with all these different, like, how do I export it? They, they have, like, <laughs> Apple Pro, right? like this and that. Yeah, and here's, a, here's a bunch of twirl downs into the various formats and the codecs and the, and the standards. And are these standards up to date? I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know it, it, there's a lot. There's a lot of a lot. So Yeah, that, and that can be super overwhelming if you're just like, all right, I just need to get this thing up and, like, we need everybody to see it. Especially if, like, let's say you, you're, you know, you are coming off of work and you only had a couple hours to edit this and you need to put it up, you know, by 6 p.m. because you don't want it to be uploaded super late in the day and because mm -hmm. nobody's going to see it if they're sleeping. So um, being able to do this is very good for time sensitivity. Mm -hmm. um, you can, it uploads it right in the right format. And you can also schedule it in here, which mm -hmm. is great. So if you're, if you're the kind of channel that's doing Tuesday, Thursdays or Monday, Fridays, there you go. you've only got the weekend to work on something, you, you do work on the weekend, you schedule it to go up and you're, you're good to go. And loading in the API, you get your tags right, you get your description right. Yep. That's, a, that's a whole other metadata side of things that is important and yeah. you, should, you should invest in it. But the, the upload to Instagram is great. Cause, yes. Because you don't have to airdrop it to your phone and put mm -hmm. it in the app and then put it up. Like it's all these little steps, you know, it lets you just flow into the creativity. Yep, the, and once you're logged into all these things too, you guys can see what I'm doing on the left-hand side. I'm just like, clicking, even Behance, like you can just click and they're, boom, all of them. Yeah, so, fire them all at once. Yep, that's a great thing and I mean, no pun intended with Premiere Rush, but if you need to rush and edit, it's the way to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, Media Encoder is kind of the same way where you, you set up all these things and it, it fires them all at the same time. It's engaging all the cores of your machine. So, yep. uh, anyway, we've reached the challenge submission deadline. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's see so it. Time's up, y'all. Uh, We've got, oh, we got a bunch of entries that came in new. Sweet, we have like seven of them to go through. Okay. Yeah, so let's um, let's jump into that right now, actually, because yeah. we've got we got a bunch to go through. Uh, let's see, I think this is uh, this is where we last last left off. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, Dom Marie Lambert. So we're gonna check out uh, some water. A lot of use of Adobe stock yeah. images and some titles. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a sucker for slow motion things. Oh, me too. Like stuff falling into other things, <laughs> things breaking in slow motion, yeah. fluid dynamics in slow oh, motion. Oh yeah. Uh, That's a sick clip. <laughs> very very uh, triumphant music here. Right? Very uplifting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look all the water they're using. That was a cool little transition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> water is everywhere. Heck yeah. Yeah. I like that little ending. Mm hmm. That's great. Oh, some folks are asking if their uh, if their submission got in. I'm not sure. The, I'll give the gallery another refresh. This is what we've got. I'm afraid some people might have been cut off by the deadline. Oh man. But we have challenges every week, so it's really important if you if you, yeah. if you like doing these things. Next week we'll be working with different apps. Uh, it'll be different things, but consistent challenges. So, Definitely. all right. So that was water. Now we're gonna go on to Jan. Jan's got uh, this cat going on. Let's see what's up. <laughs> Jan, tell me if this is your cat. This is uh, this is great. <laughs> Wagging cat tail. <laughs> Some uh, French New Wave here. It's amazing. It's like the the tail is orchestrating the music. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love the ending. Just <laughs> movement. 
Wonderful. Oh, it was her neighbor's cat. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. All right, so now we got Tim. Tim's coming up here next. Tim in the chat, big supporter out here. A little surfing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, no, true. I'm just kidding. Oh, that was all right. Yeah. <laughs> I like we kind of go to like a more melancholy thing, like yeah. the music change. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was really yeah, cool. I like that. And we got uh, Alexandra. Okay. <laughs> Some tonal shift here. <laughs> That was yeah. interesting. Yeah. Like, cause definitely the, got me. In the middle, I was like, is that it? Oh, no. <laughs> Stop <laughs> running. <laughs> what? <laughs> Pretty effective. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. All right, Tyrone. <laughs> Work movement. Yeah. Oh, those shoes, though. Yeah, those are some dope kicks. What are those? <laughs> A lot of people enjoying the hyperlapse footages, yeah. time lapse footages. Definitely lots of movement there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. I've done actually a few time lapses since I've been here. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm not in cities much and it's funny how everything moves really fast. Yeah. Nine to five hustle. I heard about that. <laughs> she's drinking that coffee. Yeah, she's really pounding <laughs> that. It's interesting that we're following the story of this one person. Yeah. You know? Now she's heading home. Waiting for that train. She seems happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm stoked to be home. We're going home. <laughs> I'm getting on the high tech future train here. Yeah. Nice little players. Hanging now. Yep. It's the end of the day. Taking the shoes <laughs> off. That's when another day is over. <laughs> That's a stock element. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Nice use of that. Yeah. Oh, just in case you forgot, here it is again in a uh, different color. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's like it's, raining. Yeah. A little particle system. Everybody <laughs> likes the particles. Who doesn't like particle systems? I don't know. Yeah, you can find a lot of clips on Adobe Stock. Mm hmm. There's like, there's, you know, there's. Realistic things, there's motion graphics y things, mm -hmm. so many things. 
All right, here's, uh, here's some Colby. Hey, Colby, back again, uh, staying with us all week long. Yeah, Colby. That's great. Oh. oh, yeah, this is uh, accessibility controller. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Maxing out the audio here. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. And then we got uh, Alberto. Ah, more cats. Can't have enough cats. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Poopy? <laughs> <laughs> Dashy. He kind of like licked him, like his <laughs> paw to the, <laughs> to the music. The <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Classic. I love Mortal Kombat, so. Yeah, get your guard up. <laughs> oh my gosh, this just looks like my cats. <laughs> Smash I, pass. If uh, if you know whose cats these are, are they brother? Are they brother and sister? <laughs> they look very similar, don't right? they? Right, it's from the same litter. Yeah. Just fighting like brother and sister. Moving into side control. Wow, very tactical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cats for you. So hey, thanks everybody for your entries. That yeah. was terrific. We've had a had a lot of them today here on the last day. I think everyone's kind of absorbing the knowledge, getting into it, getting comfortable. Yeah. And, uh, they're diving in. So thank you everybody who submitted those. We're going to review them offline and our uh, our producers will let you know uh, when the stream is over who cool. is the winner. We have to deliberate. We have to look at them all in the fullness of time. Yep. But uh, we will come to a consensus and it'll be great. So just to remind everybody that uh, even though we wrap up today, you know, uh, the uh, Adobe Live continues you know, every day of the week there's something going on. And uh, there'll be different apps, different experts next week. So if you're into this kind of thing, then you should definitely make it part of your life, part of your day. Uh, if you're at work, just tell your boss that this is professional development, because mm -hmm. it is. So these are, these are things you can you can bring into the office. And uh, if you're just hanging out, then this is great too. We're, we're glad to have you with us. So definitely uh, subscribe, to, uh, subscribe to us on our many platforms here. And uh, make an account on Behance so we can see in the chat. Yep. We'll get that stuff. But we got some more time here. We've yeah. we got, got about 20 more minutes. Cool. So let's get back into it. I think uh, we promised some uh, some editing into an Instagram format, maybe some color correction, color grading. Yeah, let's try some color correction. Let's see, uh, let's explore that Instagram option as well and uh, see where we can go from there. Um, so let's find a good clip actually that we can probably color correct here. Um, I don't like to do too much color correcting unless um, depending on like it depends on the in the vibe of the of the video so I don't like to go like the over dramatic style of it I kind of like to make it feel a little more natural unless I'm trying to do like an entire video with a certain sort of feel or like kind of like the, those LUT feels where it's like oh maybe like teals and oranges or whatever mm -hmm. um, since this one is kind of all over the place at different times of the day um, sometimes I like I like kind of having that a feel of like, oh wow, it was it was daytime and now it's like sunset or like this and that. But color correction in general is goes a long way. So um, even if you're not trying to completely change uh, the feel or the mood of your clips, um, color correction will help at least bring it out and make it um, look a lot more professional than just like, you know, the raw video clip. Yeah, and some cameras come out looking flat. Yes. Some, like, it really depends on your, your setup and the lighting and mm -hmm. so many variables. Yeah, and if, if you guys uh, happen to know anyone or, or do shoot in like a lot of like commercial style settings or whatever, like shooting in S-Log, like you were saying, it's completely flat. Yeah. Um, and you, you have to have color correction and all that stuff. And there's, there's a lot of color information there mm -hmm. to play with, but if, you, if you're not gonna do something with it, you know, it's it's just, 
like, Bleh, here's a dump of all our yeah. high dynamic range values. Exactly. Thanks. <laughs> That's cool. Some people like that look, that kind mm -hmm. of washed out filmy look. Yeah, yeah, I have seen that a lot. It, it really just depends on your style. And I mean, maybe for some projects that it, it would actually work, uh, you know, depending on if you're telling like a documentary of like something that's like, you know, got that grungy vibe or I don't know, whatever it is, you mm -hmm. can kind of get that feel. <laughs> Simulate the film look. Yeah, exactly. There's actually a film um, little preset here I wanted to show you. It's kind of cool, actually. Um, let's see it on this clip. So we have the dog here. And if we click this preset, boom. Now, if you don't like it that much, but you like the feel of it, and you're like, oh, well, it's just a little too intense. The cool thing is, is you can come down here in the intensity, and you can pull it down. So as you can see, like this is with no filter and this is like full <laughs> double the filter. Film filter. So it's kind of cool with this clip. It adds like almost like that little color feel to it, like the pinkish and things like that. So we can kind of play around with leaving that like that. Or we can go right over to the edits tab on the right hand side and you can see we have all these different options. And these can go such a long way, especially for a clip that's too dark or a clip that's overexposed. Mm. Um, let's see how it looks when we up the shadows and you can even, you know, bring up the contrast or something like that. A lot of times, like, um, if the shadows are just too much, you can bring those down and now we kind of have that darker, like, more focused towards, you know, the middle and the whites feel. Mm. And we have even vibrance that we can play around with. You can see, you can make it that, like, puke. There are a lot more greens on the road than I anticipated. Isn't that you're crazy? Yeah. <laughs> like, so. there's little color information that you don't really pick up on until you blow it out. Yeah, it's, that's why I like to do it, honestly. Even though you know that you're not gonna, like, leave it there, it's cool to see both sides, right? Because now you really know, like, the range of what you're working with. And Yeah, and if we were, like, if we were using you know, regular Premiere, we would be calling up our scopes, we'd be looking at all these graphs, we'd be like, oh, look at all the green points over mm -hmm. here. Mm, let's let's get those curves and you can you really dial, you can really go deep on color if you really want to. Yeah, it, you can spend as much time on color as you can, like <laughs> your edit sometimes, it's there are, insane. There are people who only colorize. Exactly. Footage, so it's, uh, you can make a whole career out of just doing that. Yeah, definitely. So like, don't ever feel also like just knowing that, you know, don't feel like you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm just so lost on this. Cause yeah, there's literally professionals. That's all they do is like they're trained in color. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, you have your basics uh, here that are so valuable, but make it so much simpler for you to just pull it together really quick. And even uh, vignetting here, this is a really cool feature where you can go this way or that way. Mm. And it kind of draws focus to your subject or the middle of your frame. And I love that as well. Um, we can even see it on a different clip here. Let's, let's see what clip may need some. And there's that vignetting. Let's watch the clip. There you go. And you can see like Miley, um, my pup's a little bit more in focus of the eye because of the big netting and we can even. Yeah, it really, uh, really brings you to the center of the frame. And what's interesting is when it's a clip that's kind of out of context, it creates kind of that otherworldly kind of tunnel vision yeah. on it. So you can go from like, it's really bright and then whoop, now we're really zoomed in here. Yeah. So it, you can play around, it really impacts the audience. The, exactly. way, the way they feel about a clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's super important to try and like make sure that you're really getting the most out of um, each clip that you're using, and you know if you don't like the feel of it, see what you can do to to kind of manipulate that and make it better. Like I don't really like all this kind of streetness around here, where it's like uh, lots of shadows and randomness on the sides. So mm. while I can't um, just take that out, I can at least help that with the vignetting. So um, I'm not. I didn't even have to click on. This one, I can just use this to scroll over and it automatically highlights it, which mm. is cool. And it helps your process to do it quicker because I can come over here and, you know, go to the vignetting and I could scroll over to the next one or I can even create a preset, which, um, which is cool as well. And I can just come over here and I like that vignetting style. Mm -hmm. Create a preset, let's call it V. Super simple. <laughs> Don't yeah. need to get crazy with your titles, everybody. I really didn't know what to call it, guys, so <laughs> we're going to go with V. <laughs> and it, if it makes sense to your workflow, 
That, that's all you need. Exactly. Right? This, this, this is filter one. This is filter two. <laughs> <laughs> filter three. We know the V is for the vignette. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's the preset right down there. As you saw, um, that was our original tab that we were in. And nice and easy, there's that preset. Um, I can actually drag and drop it um, places too that I need it, I believe. Let's see. Or I can even just click on it. Let's go to, yeah, let's go to this one. This one definitely needs something going on there. Boom. Mm. So now we're a little more focused in on uh, the middle of the frame there. So you can see, nice and simple. Um, let's see if it even lets you, the one lets you do that, but you can do it really quick by just going boop. There you go. And you can still adjust it from there as well. You can still go back over to your editing and you can fix it. So you, if you're like, ah, well, not every preset is going to work for every single you right. know, cut you have. It's just not always possible. But and you might even be combining footage from, like, we've got drone and we've got, uh, you know, action camera out here. So you might be combining footage from multiple things. If you have a lot of lens elements that might have its own vignette already in it, just from the hardware you're dealing with. Exactly. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta take it one, take one clip at a time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, every once in a while, you know, you get lucky and there's like a few clips in a row that are like, oh wow, like, this is kind of the same exact feel, so I can kind of copy and paste from there. But um, yeah, we just got to work with what we got here. And that I think some of this vignetting has really helped, um, even this frame, trying to ease that up a little bit. Let's just go just a little bit there. And just, just enough to kind of give that vibe. Um, I don't know if you guys mentioned or saw this transition too. It's kind of like, in going from indoors to outdoors. Mm -hmm. So that big netting will also help this clip. Give it a little bit more and match that vibe just a little bit better. Oh man, yeah, it's, uh, it's all good stuff out here. And it's really, you know, you, you, you kind of have to, you, you gotta be flexible on the day and then you have to be adaptable in post. Yeah, because so. you're not, you may plan also a shoot and this happens to us a lot where we're like, okay, we're gonna shoot at golden hour, whether that be golden hour, um, you know, sunrise, sunset, but there might be clouds and then there's no sunset. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened so much, <laughs> so bad. Well, we waited all day for this shot and here we are. Right, and it's, and it's unfortunate too if you're like working throughout the day or you got something else going on because then you're like waiting, waiting, waiting. You're like, all right, we're gonna get this done today and then, you know, it starts to rain. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh crap, all right, well, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of things to, to deal with out there. Definitely. Um, so you guys saw a little bit of color correction there, and that definitely takes some time just to go through and make sure you got it all right. Tweak it down um, from anything from your colors to your highlights, your shadows, um, all those come into play, especially in underwater clips. As you can see, this clip's kind of dark. We can even go back into um, the color settings here go into the, you know, the editing settings, we can make it um, a little bit brighter with the shadows or we can pull the highlights out um, so we can see just a little bit better underwater. And that clip actually handled like full highlights pretty good just because it, it is so dark under there. But then you see here how it gets to be a little bit brighter so mm -hmm. you can kind of fit it in the middle. Yeah, as the lighting conditions in the clip change, Make sure you watch the whole clip. Exactly. Yeah. That was literally just what I was about to say because yeah. you never know. Like, it, especially what I was showing you with the exposure change and like a, um, a, a camera that's not or in manual mode, I guess. So you would have that weird moment where you need to make sure you're you're paying attention to how dark it goes to how light it goes, just like that. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's kind of explore the the Instagram. Yeah, we got we, uh, we got a little bit more time here yeah. for sure. Um, I think I showed you guys over here the preview quality, how we can view it in high, medium, and low. Mm -hmm. But right above that is orientation, and that's huge because um, this is made for YouTube right now, but um, we could definitely make it portrait, and we could also, and that's if you want to throw it up on your story. Let's say you want to make a teaser out of this. We would just chop it right at 15 seconds, and we would have a teaser. We can, you know, mix it up if you wanted to and whatnot, or we can come right in here. And I kind of like to. So, like maybe maybe pro tip. Don't know if it's considered pro tip, but <laughs> tip for like what I've worked with is when I film uh, in my original state of like horizontal. So 
going into your, your filming, you're gonna choose, am I gonna hold the camera like this or am I gonna hold the camera like that? Because that's kind of gonna dictate like how your edit's gonna go. Mm -hmm. But sometimes for this instance, we have to use both. So um, a lot of times if there's a lot of the frame to show, I like to edit to square instead of 1350 by 1080 mm -hmm. uh, or 1080 by 1350. So um, if you guys know the Instagram format, like 1080 by 1350 is the most it can go and take up a vertical screen. Like we were talking about mm -hmm. that Real estate, the real estate. So you want to take up as much of the Instagram screen as possible. Um, just like you, you know, you would you would want to upload um, horizontally to YouTube because most people will be watching them in that style. Mm -hmm. So going to Square kind of gives you a little more frame there, as you can see. So we had the opportunity to just take this whole edit and change it in the click of a button. And I actually, you know, even coming from different editing softwares, I don't really know many editing softwares that it's that easy. <laughs> Very few. Yeah. yeah I, this might be the only one. It, it might be the only one. Honestly, I, I haven't had this experience in any edit. Like, this is crazy how you can one click of a button, just go from different platforms. And the, the most beneficial thing to me is, is this button down here. As you guys can see it highlighted, it says loop playback. And uh, loop playback um, might not be something that people realize helps them out unless they are trying to create a loop. Mm. Um, and this is where I can really get a feel for how it's gonna look on Instagram. So if we were to, let's say, make this video for Instagram, I would probably crop off this last part. Right. And that's just because um, this last frame here it fits better for showing the whole scene. So this is going from, hey, I'm underwater, and this is where I was underwater. Mm -hmm. But since we're creating a loop, um, this doesn't give me an out point. Right. So, and I don't really need a title for Instagram. It's not necessarily what you should do, but it's just my style. I like to create a little less branding in Instagram because it feels more native to the right. platform. Well, wow. and speaking of wrapping it up, that's uh, we're we're coming to the end of the time here. Yeah, I'm glad it's, you guys got to see that part of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got got it in right at the end. Yes, yeah, definitely. So you know, thank you so much for for coming and hanging out with us here, and uh, thank you for being the uh, the loading screen of, of Rush. Yeah. That's terrific. Uh, Amber Torrealba, uh, if people want to see more of your work, where can they go and check that out? Uh, check it out on Instagram and uh, YouTube. Uh, also, I use Twitter every once in a while and things like that. You guys might be able to see this like full version. I don't know if it's going to look exactly like this, but mm. you definitely will recognize some of these clips. You're going to be able to see the finalized version of this. I'll be posting it on YouTube yeah. and Instagram. And we've got and uh, your Instagram up on my screen here. Oh, if cool, we can, cool. Uh, if we can jump to that so you can see yep. some, of your, some of your excellent stuff up here. And yep. you're also on the Twitters, which we know. Got the Twitters. I uh, I posted that I was live just, just two hours ago. So. <laughs> Yeah, and, people and you mentioned you're relaunching your YouTube channel that's coming up. Yeah, so I focus was, on that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that. Like, it's going to be more consistent. And so before um, I was involved with a lot of even growing myself as a videographer and learning how to make these edits better and stuff like that. And uh, I used to do a lot of vlogs and things like that. So I'm going to be doing a lot more cinematic style of vlogs awesome. and voiceovers. And Good. Stuff. Well, look for that, everybody. Thanks again for coming out. Thanks to everybody who came out in the chat. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I'm Evan Abrams. This has been Amber Toyalba <laughs> for Rush. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks, guys.